I don't know why the alarm is going off. It's my garage. Or at least I wish it was mine. It's only a block away from my safe house. Yeah, not a very appropriate way to start a video, but at least I'm playing to the game's title. Anyway, hi ladies and gentlemen, Spenny here, and welcome to Grand Theft Auto 4 Part 11. And how do we match the previous episode where nearly a third of it was just one mission because there was so much going on at once? Well, with every mission having at least one shootout from here on out. Removed from the tutorials and thinking more about trying to find the two people Nico is looking for. But first, there's one other bit of personal arguing to deal with first. Yo, man, don't be trifling with me. You made a decision. You gotta fix this Dwayne problem of ours, yeah? Hey, it ain't our problem, Playboy. It's yours. That said, I know what I'm going to do. Of course we all know what the decision is. One thing I skipped for time constraints was Dwayne asking me to take out Playboy, not realizing Playboy told Nico to take him out. Yo, what you doing? You got rid of Dwayne already? I thought the old dog would have put up more of a fight. If you choose Dwayne, that is exactly the case. Just one enemy with a bat and a cinematic execution. Well, I was thinking that maybe Dwayne is not the problem. Maybe it's you. Anyway, that's what makes this choice interesting. None of them realize you actually have a choice between the two. So when Balak is like, I'm taking you out, they're like, wait, what? Why me? And of course, I've chosen Playboy. Oh, dodge the little ball. Oh, he did a. <laughs> I also haven't forgotten that auto aim is turned off. I've decided that I'm going to try and beat the rest of the game without it. So, as you can see, I'm firing from the side of cover since there's a lot of enemies in this room. As I said in the middle of the last mission, if you exit cover to fire a weapon, the crossfire moves a little bit, so you need to aim more specifically. I showed you the world, gangster! X marks the spot! I love that quote, though it's out of place to use it here. That's the thing with Playboy, you have to work for it. Even if you kill me, you're gonna have this whole town after your ass. Where are you going, Playboy? With Dwayne on my side? I don't think so. And even then, with my GTA experience, I can take everyone on single-handedly. That's one bit of logic a lot of the characters don't put into consideration. I mean, just look at how many enemies I've taken out in this mission alone. It was you or Dwayne! I chose Dwayne! How awkward would it be if he actually ended up having ammo? Whoa, wait, there was ammo in the gun. Well, that was unlucky for Playboy, wasted the only bullet in the gun thinking it was empty, and really lucky for Nico that it didn't hit him, like divine intervention. I was an innovator. You didn't change the game. The game changed you. It's honestly the most canon choice of the story. Everything just points to Dwayne being the better option, and the clues were there. How you get a thumbs up from Dwayne whenever you complete a mission which only applies to friends, that there's a parking lot outside Playboy's apartment, and that Balik barely hesitated taking out Playboy, whereas with Dwayne, he's a lot more hesitant. I can't give you no money for helping me, son, but I got the D to Playboy's fancy silk sheet glove. You can have it. That's another thing, Playboy will give you money, but Dwayne will give you a whole safe house, which is a much more practical bonus. Maybe you'll stop by my place sometime though. Hang out with me. I don't have many friends left, you know. And finally, he becomes a friend you can do activities with. But first you need to reply to one of his emails first and reply positively, which as you can see I'm doing straight away. Nico, my man. We've been hanging out for a while now. How's about a game or two of pool? You up for it? And speaking of new characters to hang out with outside missions, Packy also wants to do something. And an activity I haven't done yet. Pool. I will come to the next hour. Nice one, Nico. See you soon. We'll drive to Packy's destination because I'm trying to drive supercars as often as possible while I have them. What is annoying sometimes is that a character might be too far away to drive there, and you even get a thumbs down from friends who think you're late. Another reason to have a supercar, I guess. There's me man. Now you might think I'm driving to that bar Jacob hangs out because it's the only place to play pool. False. If you go to Playboy's old apartment that now belongs to me, remember when he was playing pool in one of the cutscenes? Not bad. Well, you can use it if you have a friend with you. And I only realized it by the time I was playing this game for the review. Again, there are probably a hundred more little details I'm yet to discover. Anyway, let's play some pool. I think Packy is supposed to be the best at this activity. Oh, actually I take that back. <laughs> 
That's something I usually don't see very often. As a matter of fact, it happens a lot in this game specifically. Another thing that's interesting about pool is how the rules regarding fouls differ here in Australia. Now in GTA 4, a foul means you can put the cue ball anywhere you want, whereas down under, you get two shots instead. At least that's what I was taught, and those were the rules I used the last time I played pool, which was a New Year's Eve party in 2019. And I only realized it was different outside of Australia because of this game. Weird, isn't it? Now by this point, I completely dropped the ball, no pun intended, by accidentally clicking the stop recording button during gameplay without realizing, which meant I had to replay the whole episode, redo a few of the missions again, therefore the rest of the video will be scripted dialogue from here on out. Which is a shame, because I wish I had the microphone on for this reaction to Packy losing a pool game in the most embarrassing way. Unlucky. I'm sorry. Alright Nico, you won. If you try to rub my face in it, things ain't gonna be pretty. I say it's more you lost and I won. Anyway, let's take you home and do the mission with your brother Gerald since the marker is literally the other side of the house. I got a call from him at the end of the last episode, but like Dwayne, I cut it for time constraints. Come in, come in. Beer? No thank you. Oh, I agree. Let's have whiskey instead. Good one, Gerald. By the way, Nico never actually has a drink, or at least it's not shown during the cutscene. You handled yourself well on the bank job. It was fun. Fun? Too much fun. That's always been this family's problem. Fun. Good causes, a good laugh, some stupid dream or some stupid distraction. <laughs> but never any fucking focus! This is a Grand Theft Auto game, it's supposed to be fun. You're gonna plant a bomb in Tony Black's car. Be rigged to a phone. Thing will go off when you dial a number. I want it to blow when they get back from their meeting. So the Ancelotti's think the Albanians did it. Exactly. You know, Packy was right for once. I'm glad you're on board. As I said the last episode, I thought he was going to be a secondary antagonist. But this basically says, nah, he isn't. And he actually isn't. Though it would have made for an interesting subplot if he was. Since I took a cab, I decided to run all the way to the bomb. It's finding the Molotov cocktails hidden in an alleyway by Tenpenny all over again. Make sure no one walks away. It's easy, right? So easy, I don't see why you ain't doing this yourself. Nico, I wouldn't trust myself with this task. You ain't got a gallon of whiskey in your system, and besides, you're being paid, ain't you? Good Call point. Me Take a cab because most of the mission is driving anyway. Like you need a car to tail the enemy that has a bomb under the car. And since the next few minutes is following the same vehicle from one side of the map to the other, I'll take this chance to thank you all again for the view count the review of GTA 4 has gotten over the last couple of years because, okay, I talked about this in the most recent Q&A, but since it's about GTA 4, I'll mention it again. At the time of making the review around 2018, I was also working a full-time university internship, literally 40 hours a week. Week, on top of the uni assignments based on said internship, including a final report with a word count that could rival scripts for GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 reviews, a 30 minute presentation, I had to travel to the city a few times so my progress at work was checked on, all of that alone was hard work, so imagine trying to cram making game reviews at the same time. And when a lot of those assignments were due, I was in the middle of making the Grand Theft Auto 4 review when for about a month, I only slept around 3-5 to five hours a day just to make as much time as possible possible for both sides of work. I only did this game despite its size because I wanted to review something I already knew almost everything about. But even with that said, it was the most stressful period I ever went through in my life. And when the day finally came to press the publish button in the video settings, I was in tears dancing around like I just won the F1 Drivers Championship. So to see it with the views it's got now in contrast to what I normally get out of these videos, that is the best feeling I got of hard work paying off. And I promised myself I wouldn't play it again again for at least a year. But after a couple of months I saw the views it got very early, I broke that promise and decided to review the expansions as well, which fortunately wasn't as stressful. Anyway, back to the game. I like that the enemies don't wait for the traffic lights, unlike that other mission when you're sitting next to Manny. And as you can see, I know in advance to park here and detonate the bomb. Another cool looking explosion. However, I don't get why the other cars start exploding as well if nothing's attached to them. 
I can take everyone out from here actually. I mean aiming a sniper rifle is no different from aiming with manual aim with the auto aim turned off. Jesus, listen to myself. However, there was one left hidden behind the pipes I can't get to. Mine now, you wanna get burned? Yeah, Find no. some cover! There we go. It's just another enemy sweeper. But no matter what, you have to escape a two star once at level after that. Oh look, a bar belonging to the Angels of Death. They must have fixed it very quickly after what the loss did to it. Everyone got taken down. The rest of them should think the Albanian muscle is making a way. Come in, Nico. You fought in the war. You know a lot. Yes. There are suggestions that the contact was involved in the same war Nico fought in, because as you saw in the last cutscene, you could speak the same language. And my wife had better stop sleeping with that tennis coach, or... <laughs> I'm joking. I'm sure your wife doesn't need to sleep around. Well, I'm joking. I'm sure she does. Funny. I really like the banter between these two. They have a surprising chemistry. Interesting. I'm not divorced. I was never married. No details. He's a very interesting character, the United Liberty Paper contact. For starters, he doesn't have a name because it's not relevant. But I reckon if he did, it would be Mike Torino because these two are practically the same. Think about it. Both of them blackmail the main protagonist to do crazy missions to get one up on their rival agency and keep American freedom secure to some degree. But in exchange, they give them what they want at the end of the day. Maybe I will help you. Maybe I won't. Minor spoiler, but just pointing out the similarities. Though on the flip side, you can also call it lazy writing, just recycling another character and situation from a predecessor. They would even use it again in GTA 5 with Steve Haynes. Now get access to a police computer and wait for my message. Go! Wouldn't you think a government agency would supply a police car for you, or already have the information about this person? I guess it's just another excuse to use the police computer again. I think this is the only time it's used to scan a photo. Look at them, drive on the wrong side of the road and stop in the middle of it. Small wonder traffic is so heavy in this city. I'll fix it though. Now, let's search this guy. He's at this car dealership near where we last saw Manny and his cameraman. Dispose of them all. We're doing a favor for our comrades in the east. You better start doing me some favors soon. The element of surprise. <laughs> Imagine how much better this game would be if it controlled like Max Payne 3. Now, I'm not saying it should have, I'm just curious now that I have the auto aim turned off. And controlling it more like a first person shooter with the crossfire always active. Like most of these kills in this mission are headshots. Another detail about the controls is if you do have the auto aim turned on, if you have the trigger button only slightly held down, you can control the crossfire manually like the auto aim is turned off. So theoretically, I can turn it back on and still play it this way. Nah, I'm not going up the ladder. There's a couple of enemies waiting for me, it's suicide. So I'm going around. Ooh, he reached cover. Wait, I got him in the leg! And for some reason, the last man standing surrenders. Nah. That strange feeling deep inside? That's the feeling of satisfaction after you did something good. Congratulations. Goodbye. Goodbye. The way he says it, it might as well be his signature catchphrase. Seriously, Balak has to change his number so that Brucey would stop calling or messaging. Maybe I should have kept count on how many times a character does so. Roman or Brucey would be contenders in that regard. Hey, Nikki! <laughs> now, this is a quick mission from Ray. It doesn't exactly affect the plot, but I suppose it's a way to prove your worth to him. Why go through all this? Why stick in that guy? Why do all this work? Because I need the money. And because I'm trying to find someone. Okay, maybe we can help. Let's see how we do. I won't forget that. See how we do. I got this friend. Only the friend ain't my friend no more because he ain't getting me the videos. Okay. 
Seems this guy does not respect the waste management business. I didn't think much of Ray Pacino at first. I thought he was just another character like Faustin. A few jobs, then a reason to take him out after that. But he's the kind of character that treads the line between villain and trustworthy. He's a greedy rat, but never actually betrays anyone that didn't have it coming to them. You mess up, bad things are gonna happen. So we got a photo of the person to question, and he always hangs out at this spot specifically, every time. You know what apartment Teddy Benavides is in? No sé, I don't know no Teddy's. Shit, man. Whoa, he has an M4 in his pocket? Okay, I'll talk. Then after that, he'll call Teddy to warn him of Nikki's presence. But even if you kill him, the enemies on the top four, they'll be like, who's this guy? And it's the same beginning to an inevitable shootout. Are you kidding me? Did you see how quickly I lost all my health? Okay, now I'm in quite a pickle. I admit, if I was playing this leisurely, I would have restarted by now. But I've decided since thousands of people are watching, I consider this an opportunity to prove how much I've played this game and persevere. I am either keeping the crossfire on or taking cover, at least until I find a first aid kit. Also looking every corner because I know there's at least one enemy on every single one of them. It's a matter of when they're gonna shoot. It's like a duel from the Wild West or Red Dead Redemption. I know there's an enemy on the stairs. And miraculously got a first aid kit. Thank God for that. At least the story walking up the stairs because of construction checks out. I have to admit, I paused it a few times to check if it was recording because, as I said before, I'm redoing the episode all over again. I'm really making sure I don't want to make the same mistake again. Now, I know one enemy can suck your health dry if you're not careful, but that's how I normally open a door in this situation. That way I have the gun always aiming just in case enemies are waiting. Just like that. Well, you look at that, I went from sun death to not even needing it anymore. Ah! <laughs> I actually thought that was pretty funny the first time. That's the thing, he walks away, suddenly he's on the stairs, which can catch you off guard. Your ass is mine now, son! Yeah, I'm still a little cautious because I don't want to lose all my health again. As I said the last episode, without the auto aim, enemies can appear next to you without realizing, so you have to be more careful. What's this about, Bendejo? You owe Ray Bocino a lot of money. You should have paid. Those putos too old. They're finished, fool. Yeah, tell that to the rest of the game. Oh, wait, I took them all out single handedly. <laughs> Just walk closely. The previous attempt, he landed on the railing. It looked a lot more brutal than this. Also, you can hear him still grunting, which technically means he's still alive. Dead is dead. We talking about? Hey, who's he? Sorry to hear about your loss. I'll be in touch, Nikki. All right, we'll end it there. That was a close call at the beginning of the previous mission. And guess what? The next episode, there'll be multiple occasions where health is just as low, so look forward to that one. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, Patreon, Twitter, Facebook. And let's end it with a couple of Easter eggs from Rockstar's previous games. Claude's actual outfit, which you can only obtain from Playboy's apartment. And as you can see on the telly, Red Dead Revolver. Thank you all for watching, and speak to you soon. Shootouts are coming to Tuesdays on the next season of Spittoon. Don't miss it.